warm welcome from my side. Uh, my name is Uli Weinberg. I'm the founding director of the School of Design Thinking in Potsdam in Germany and um, also the president of the Global Design Thinking Alliance. And welcome to our second spotlight in 2024. Um, we have this kind of month monthly session also, always with special guests from the design thinking community. And uh, we have very special guests today from India. And I'm really happy that you are staying uh, at your office, even if it's evening there. And thank you very much for, for joining. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining here at our afternoon, your morning, your midnight or whatever. Um, this session is meant to be an exchange session, um, presentation, information exchange to encourage collaboration between our member institutions, but also but the, well, out, the just... others. Uh, please uh, switch off your audio uh, for those of you who are not talking uh, later on. And uh, please switch on your video right now. Uh, I love, I love to see you. I haven't seen you, Thomas, uh, from Malaysia since quite a while. Good to, good to see you that you're back, uh, Jacob, also from Western University. Um, great to see you. Actually, my background is not a, not a GDTA background today because I'm experiencing. Uh, severe internet problems right now here in Berlin. Uh, that is unfortunately not uh, not so uncommon here <laughs> we have in the city, a lot of things which uh, should work better, especially the internet. But uh, my iPad is still doing it, but uh, on the iPad, I don't have the proper background, but I have a globe as the background and I have probably the night, uh, the night view, which is now um, the right time for our for our guests from India. So the idea is to have a presentation, um, maybe the first 30 to 40 minutes and then open up the discussion. During the presentation, I would like to ask you to switch off your camera um, so that you have full performance uh, with the slides which are presented and uh, with our presenters. Um, and then later on, please switch on your video on your audio and then we have a hopefully lively discussion you can have q and a also in between uh, with our chat and um, unfortunately usually we would play our trailer right now but we figured out there's internet problems not only in berlin but also in potsdam so <laughs> we have uh, a tough time right now i hope our friends in india have never that never to experience these kind of um, bad internet connections and uh, originally uh, announced was uh, Dr. Nalin as Kumar um, and but unfortunately he uh, falls sick and uh, he but he was not declining the whole thing actually he was passing it over to his colleagues at the SNS institutes and uh, I'm really happy that we can celebrate this SNS today and not have to postpone it to somewhere. And uh, so please send our best greetings to Nalin. Uh, I heard he is recovering quite, quite fast. And uh, that is a very, very good news. Uh, but we have now we have actually four people to join. There is and I hope you um, allow me to call you with your first names. There's Mohan who will start. Um, we'll start this session today and give an overview about the SNS institutes. And there is uh, Yagadesh, uh, who will follow up and give some examples of projects. And there is Saita, um, also giving some examples. And uh, closing will be Taran. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to your presentations. Actually, when I learned about SNS, first time, and that was before you were joining the Global Design Thinking Alliance. Uh, Dr. Nalin was telling me something which I couldn't believe. Uh, because in the Western world, if you look at education, it is very much divided in different pieces. So there is an institution which is dealing with the kindergarten. There is another institution which is dealing with the elementary school. 
There's another institution sometimes which is de dealing with a secondary school. And there's a completely different uh, institution which is dealing with the university. And, and that he was telling me there is SNS and there is one institution dealing with everything from kindergarten to the PhD. And I, could, I couldn't even believe this. But when he started telling me that what he was trying to do is to bring design thinking to his whole organization, it was like, I can't believe it that you're doing this because that is my wish. That was my wish for years to see design thinking being driven not only at the university level, what we are trying to do and the, and the professional training, which we are also doing at, at, the, at, the, at Potsdam. But actually, design thinking needs to start way earlier. And I'm so happy that your institution is, is doing that. So, and now I want to learn more uh, from all of you, from Mohan, Yagadesh, Saita, and Taran. Please, um, the floor is yours. And please, a warm welcome to our friends from India. SNS Institute. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity. And I bring you, the four of us bring you warm wishes from Dr. Nalim Dumal. He's recovered well and uh, he was very keen on joining the event, but unfortunately he couldn't join. The doctors advised him not to stra uh, strain much. So with that, we once again thank you for the opportunity you have given. In this presentation, we'll be talking about the purpose of change in SNS, how the student persona and their needs have called for a change and how things have been evolving. And we also looked at the, uh, there was a need for the new purpose, uh, which was developed, which evolved. And we had, we would share a few examples about how the challenges in introducing new ideas were accepted and Sorry for the little hitch. Let me start all over again. So this presentation would talk about uh, the purpose of change in SNS, how the student persona and their needs were at the, when we started this experiment and how it has evolved over a period of time because we're living in a highly disruptive world with constantly changing or rather rapidly changing uh, personas and needs of them. So it called for a new purpose that we had to identify and uh, in this presentation, we'll talk about the challenges that we faced in introducing new ideas and the ideas that were adopted and the, how the execution team managed the change management and what kind of HR practices that we have employed in going taking this forward. And we'll also talk about uh, the way forward that as we foresee. Here I am, Mohan Narayan. I've been in this uh, space of education and training management for nearly three decades. And uh, I'm the head of operations for the whole group here. Just to add to what uh, Uli said, uh, we are uh, uh, 10 institutions, uh, an engineering college, uh, which was started early. It, it has about 4,500 students. College of Engineering has 2,500 students. Arts and Science students has about 5,000 students, 5, students. And uh, of course, there are paramedical institutions which have been uh, started recently, there are about 1,000 students. And of course, our K-12 school has about 1,000 students. So this is the kind of setup we have. And uh, as Uli said, we have about 61 departments and we offer education from kindergarten to PhD. And uh, here I have my colleagues, Jagdis, who's a design thinker, and he, he runs the Center for Learning and Teaching. His uh, strength is uh, learning, teaching, pedagogy, curriculum development, and he's very passionate about it. And I also have my colleague, Sajita, who's again a design thinker. She's the hands-on manager of the innovation hubs that we have in the group. And we also have uh, Tharan, Dr. Tharan, and uh, he's again a design thinker. And he, he anchors the skill and career de development activities in the whole group. With that, 
I'll start the presentation and uh, we'll share about When we started this, there were a lot of questions that were asked, why? And the many problems that we had was, many challenges that we had to face was accreditations with the NAC, National Accreditation Council, National Board of Accreditation. These are the accreditations. These in India, we are bound by the constraints placed by these accrediting agencies with the guidelines that they have given. Another major challenge that we had was we had too many metrics to measure up to in terms of completing the syllabus on time, uh, in terms of having the admissions done on time and uh, placement of students is a very, very crucial area as far as India is concerned. And again, we talk about the ranking of our institutions, uh, which are mandated. There's, na there's a national, uh, national institute, uh, uh, institutional framework, which ranks the institutions in the country. And again, uh, since we have students who are uh, coming from remote villages, they have basic communication challenges that they have and the life skill they're not too uh, familiar with. Another problem that we had was these mundane classes. We had, to, we had to find a way to transfer these mundane classes into meaningful interactions for the students to learn. These are the problems that we had to, these are the challenges that we had to face. So when we look at what do our students need, so students basically need good knowledge and a happy student life. And we also believe in identifying the students' talents, grooming them and offering them a platform to showcase their talent. So this is specifically designed, I would say personalized to each student here. And uh, so that they can identify what comes to them naturally whatever uh, their heart is after is going after. So they choose careers which are passionate about it. And this, once the student is happy and is getting into an area, a domain, which is very, very passionate for him, we are very sure that he'll find a way to succeed in life. And here, what made us to derive the problem statement and how we looked at an, a solution is that we believe we started looking at automated unified learning experiences to handle these challenges. And as I said earlier, we created platforms for grooming the talent of the students and showcasing them. And we also believe in preparing the students to solve problems using design thinking, which is the need of the art. And in terms of challenges, as I said earlier, this is a repetition of that, other compliances issues with the accrediting agencies and the misunderstanding that we had and gap in communication in terms of role definition changes. These were the challenges. And how we went about achieving this is that we looked at it in five different approaches. In terms of learning, we believe we created and developed opportunities for students to adopt the case-based learning and do take up projects. Into, in fact, if you look at it, uh, the learning case-based projects gives them the opportunity to look at the real world applications, develop, helps them develop critical thinking and also helps them to solve problems and creates an opportunity for experiential learning and of, of course, prepares them to prepare, prepares them for the professional environments. And of course, not to miss out on the opportunity to apply the theoretical concepts. And in terms of the creativity, we have the center for creativity pillar, which helps, uh, we, in which we have done enormous amount of research work. Of course, we borrowed uh, the research work done by uh, the UNESCO, the World Economic Forum, skills and we've identified an industry stack of seven tech, seven industries that would be offering enormous amount of opportunities for our students and also seven technologies which are going to uh, help students to overcome the challenges that are going to that the world that the highly disruptive world is going to throw and in terms of uh, so this has been done to help students to gain practical skills develop an entrepreneurial mindset and also enhance 
their readiness for the challenges and opportunities they will encounter in their future careers. So in terms of career readiness, exposure to emerging technologies, these technologies that we've identified exposes them to the emerging technologies and the startup culture will also enhance the students' preparedness for the rapidly evolving job market. In terms of uh, introducing them to innovation and creativity, this awareness of emerging technologies involvement with startup fosters an environment that encourages innovation and creativity. And we firmly believe in developing an entrepreneurial mindset. In fact, our vision statement talks about developing an entrepreneurial mindset among the students using DT. In fact, this knowledge of startups and business model canvas instills an entrepreneurial mindset in students. Or rather, we, I would say that we use these tools to these approaches to help our students to develop an entrepreneurial mindset. And of course, I don't have to uh, stress on the fact that this practical application of knowledge would also be a, a huge advantage for them when they participate in the hackathons. These hackathons provide them a platform for students to apply their uh, theoretical knowledge in a practical and hands-on manner and also offers them an opportunity to network with mentors, venture capitalists, uh, fellow students who would uh, who add value to their understanding of the uh, problems that they uh, and how they handle it. And of course, uh, problem solving skills arise when they uh, learn to start, uh, come up with their own startups, develop their own business model canvases and try to solve problems by participating in the hackathons. That's how they it has been done. And in terms of uh, storytelling, we, we believe in the value of uh, encouraging our students to communicate freely in a most engaging manner. So we lay a lot of stress on encouraging our students to tell stories in terms of the projects that they do, in terms of the learning opportunities that they get, in terms of the student life that they're enjoying in our institutions, that's how do. And we also have a separate future skills uh, cell which helps students to understand how the disruptive world is changing the paradigms and how the opportunities are changing, what kind of opportunities are coming up. And this exposure is given to the students to understand and prepare for the job market that is emerging and the emerging skills that would be needed in a rapidly changing world. And in terms of when we look at the way we help our students, uh, we encourage our students from the day they join to enroll themselves or other uh, upload their profiles on LinkedIn and start connecting with the professionals, with their seniors in the institutions, with their own teachers and their professionals from the industry and start networking. And this also also help them in building a strong portfolio as well as in identifying industrial mentors. We've had uh, quite a few successful cases of students identifying industrial mentors in this. In terms of uh, uh, one of our students from the arts college had written an article on hydrogen cars and I believe there is a world leader who reached out to him, congratulated him and he is given an offer to if ever he decides to pursue his uh, research in the in this space, he has been given an opportunity to come and work with that gentleman. And in terms of extension activities, we believe in evangelizing the DT design thinking. We've started DT chapters in the schools. Uh, which many schools which we adopted. In fact, it is mandated for our institutes to adopt a school and conduct boot camps as a part of our, the evangelizing effort that we've done in to promote the, the design thinking. At the essence of it, we always retain the sense of humor in the classrooms or whatever we do. And as I said earlier, we believe in identifying the talents of the students, uh, providing, you know, grooming them, nurturing them, and also offering them an opportunity to showcase. We have a spine activity center with immense amount of infrastructure in terms of uh, dance floors, uh, video and audio recording studios. There's a, a gym to, for the students to work on. And uh, every day there are about 15 to 20 students who make videos and audios using this infrastructure. And clear, clearly about 20 to 30 uh, videos are uploaded in the social media every day by our students. And in terms of the organizational structure, it's a mix of teaching support uh, staff, teaching staff, support staff, young and also experienced staff. We have a governance team which take care of, takes care of the administration, liaison with the universities, 
ensuring the compliances with the universities and all the accreditation bodies. And on the other hand, we have the design thinking core team. Nearly 150 people are there in that team who drive the design thinking evangelizing activity within the institutes as well as outside the institutes. And we do all this by connecting the purpose with process and the people. In fact, uh, we've designed uh, our uh, purposes designed in the mission statement is communicated in a clear and concise manner to all the staff members there. It's, it's reiterated in every room, every classroom that is there. If you ask, just to give you an example, if you were to enter our institute and ask our securities, what is your purpose? You would say, my purpose is to ensure a safe and secure environment for all the stakeholders, be it a student, a teacher, or a visitor, or any other supporting staff. That's how we do. And the processes we have, we've introduced processes to ensure that the environment stays safe and secure, and the people that also we have to do that. So that way, everywhere, there is a reiteration of everything, and the processes are uh, the standard operating procedures and processes are well documented and communicated to each and every stakeholder in the uh, group of institutions that we have. And we also conduct regular training programs to educate the employees about the existing process. The new ones who walk into the institutions are done, are inducted when their induction happens. We talk about our culture, the, the, the purpose, the process, and the people, and about all the evangelizing activity we do. And in fact, we make it mandatory during the training of the people itself that they need to clear this design thinking certification program. In fact, the design thinker uh, designation is earned, not given. They have to complete the process to get certified as design thinkers. And then only they are taken in as uh, they are given the title of a design thinker. So this is how the uh, HR practice at the time of induction and the ones who in, this applies to the fresh employees as well as the experienced staff who come into the institutions. And in terms of uh, bringing in uh, uniformity, we've done enormous amount of work. The biggest of this effort is the design thinking festival. It's a national festival that we conduct during the month of February, September when the Founders Day is celebrated. It's a mega event. We invite uh, uh, participants from all the, uh, uh, from all parts of the country. And invariably to begin with, it was only the participants from the Southern part of India, the subcontinent. And we are increasingly getting more and more students to coming in to participate in these things. And uh, it's a national level festival where uh, institutions are invited and they participate in a big way. And uh, there are hundreds of students who come over and it's a, it's like a, a festival. I mean, it is a festival which is celebrated in all our institutions in a big way. Apart from that, we also insist that all the students, staff, who are, even the non-teaching staff, are in, are mandated to undertake this IBM certification on design thinking. Only when they clear that, they go on to the next stage and it, to gain the designation of a design thinker. And we also promote. In fact, I, I don't know if you've noticed my tag. DTID tag. It talks about the tag talks about uh, the our institution, what kind of work we do, and the DT logo is displayed in every room, every classroom, everywhere. And of course, the banners, flyers, everything that we do in terms of brand reinforcement, we incorporate our logos, everything in the banners, flyers, and all other promotional materials in the virtual environments as well as presentations and interactive materials. This is to communicate consistently and reinforce the institute's identity throughout the change process. And in terms of the uh, teacher's manual, we have a, a logbook wherein the teachers are uh, guided to, to deliver in an engaging and effective manner. That is, uh, that does not, that's, as I said earlier, this is designed in order to transform the classroom delivery from a mundane process into an exciting, engaging process. The teachers are trained on this also. In fact, our induction process lasts about 45 days, the day they join, and all this is done. And they go through the, uh, the CLT team trains them. In fact, Jagdish, who's going to follow me, he's the one who's been uh, inducting the faculty on uh, uh, teachers' uh, induction and uh, whatever the logbook that they maintain, everything has been designed in such a way. 
and these uh, faculty are encouraged to apply for patents in terms of they're encouraged by supplying supporting them with finance and also the time time off from work and also the finance that is required to pay when they apply for patents that's how it is done and all this is done using a dynamic adaptive change management tool that we have in the form of a central communication project management tool this is how we do and in fact our institute uh, reiterates everywhere in fact we uh, we uh, our uh, social media presence is so strong uh, our identity is clearly seen visible and uh, it's unique and people can easily identify our institutions and in terms of looking as i said uh, to begin with the student needs we identify the student persona and their needs and of course post pandemic their persona has undergone a major shift and their needs also have changed and in terms of adoption of edtech has evolved in a big way uh, in india all over india of course all over the world more so in india and so even the remote areas have started uh, adopting the education technology so that's the evolution that is happening in a big way and uh, in terms of new vision as i said earlier our vision is to develop an entrepreneurial mindset as the world is becoming more and more disruptive and uh, the countries i mean the country needs so problem solvers the and that's where our tag, tagline which says redesigning the uh, mindset of uh, businesses and the students towards excellence that's our new tag, tagline and the vision is to uh, develop an entrepreneurial mindset as i said earlier we use the 3p culture pr process people and purpose process and people that's how we communicate and it's a, it is reiterated by the leaders and as i said earlier the tagline is this so with that and this is how our story has evolved and we'll be glad to take uh, questions at the end of the presentation now i would request uh, jagdish to take over from me over to you jagdish yeah just a second uh mohan sir could you please uh, turn the slide to next all right uh, so it's a pleasure uh, to exhibit uh, three of our, our student projects uh, which actually came out uh, through the uh, design thinking framework and also the boot camp that we conduct in the institution regularly uh, the first uh, project is all about Career Vista. Uh, it's an internship app. Uh, we have allocated uh, to a batch of students, and they have conducted uh, an, a user empathy, uh, nearly 20 uh, interviews, actually. So 10 with the uh, internship providers and 10 with the internship seekers. Seekers in the sense, uh, are college students, a higher education student. Usually, you know, uh, students usually look for the internship and they always go to the uh, online platform, whether Google is a search engine or go where like the authenticity. There are a lot of platforms that are available, but still uh, there are huge demands in industry also uh, for getting the for giving the internship opportunity. So our student went and had an user empathy, uh, like an interview, question method, the walkthrough and everything that. And out of that, uh, a student come to conclusion conclusion of the field of the users usually, you know, uh, the college going student, university learning mm -hmm. students usually finding a difficulty in finding opportunities. And the second one is like uh, the difficult in finding the right interns by the uh, internship providers actually. Because if we provide it in Google, an M N number of uh, employees or N number of applications actually uh, go to the industries. So finding the right talent is also another challenge with the internship providers. So that's one of the point uh, actually we took it. And the trustable industry from the internship seekers, you know, there are certain industries who could say uh, it is actually to be paid one and uh, usually at the final end it will not happen. So, and also the student internship seekers usually look for the payable one. And uh, this is the uh, the objective through the user empathy, which made our student to get into this work. And the pictures shown here 
as uh, one is with the uh, internship seeker and the one is with the student and also in the prototype making the, to build the app actually and the next slide yeah so this is uh, a, a snapshot of the uh, prototype uh, which is named as a career vista where a student can find uh, by enrolling here and the full name email credential and everything will be there and dashboard will be there where the student can update about the uh, about himself and his uh, previous work experience or an intern experience and he could update the education skills language uh, it may be a foreign language also and the appreciations and everything will be in the dashboard and the category also will be given uh, from the technical and non-technical and uh, this could be taken forward like the description of the company and what is the duration and what it want what the company is exactly so these kind of things are taken into an account and uh, the prototype actually built over that and next to bmc and usually we say uh, student teams when they work on the project always uh, look for the uh, business model canvas because you know this uh, really make them uh, to understand uh, to scaling into the startup because everything the design thinking actually creating the mindset of uh, innovation that leads to startup and we prepare the student always on the business model so that he could understand and register for a startup to carry over it and uh, these are the uh, these are the components and the inputs which taken by our student members on the bmc which we considering who are all the key partners and the key activities value proportions customer relationship customer segments channels revenue models and cost structures so these are the things actually making us as uh, mohan narayan said uh, the bmc is also been taken into the uh, part of the design thinking over it and which makes uh, the student was realize them like how to take it forward for the business and how to turn turn into the uh, the process of success so this is one particular model and uh, the next uh, project will be uh, explained by ms sajita over to you sajita hello uh, hi everybody uh, thank you mr jagdish and uh, before moving into what a club aggregator is all about i just want to share that our institution has more than 120 clubs uh, which is very active and when we observe that uh, the students find interest in multiple clubs they often feel uh, uh, they often face struggle in uh, keeping track of the events happening within the club. So this made us to think deep and uh, we felt that if this is the case at one particular point, then just imagine about the entire city or the region where there are n number of clubs prevailing. And uh, we felt that, yes, we have to do something on this and we just have to develop uh, some kind of connections between all the clubs or something which could connect all the people into one center point so that all can get the benefits of the clubs which are prevailing within the city or the region. So in all, we, uh, we uh, thought much deeper about it and then we moved into the empathy study where uh, we uh, uh, started the empathy along with the club organizers and the students and also with the target industries and the number of interviews we made was very much higher. Uh, uh, like we made the students uh, to undergo a much deeper empathy study with the club organizers. And uh, they came to identify many of the needs and the pain points of the students. And a uh, few are listed here, like uh, the field of the users. First one was the inconvenience of the multiple membership, which means that uh, if they have to keep a track of the uh, events and the activities which are happening in the different uh, clubs, it will actually uh, create uh, confusion and kind of time consuming. And uh, moving to the next one, it was like limited awareness to the club activities. There are n number of activities which are actually happening in the club, but uh, not all the people who are actually interested in the club activities come to know that so much diverse opportunities are available. And one more thing uh, was the geographical constraint because the people may be available in different places, but they still face challenges in uh, joining the club due to the geographical uh, constraints. And apart from that, uh, there is also one uh, greater thing that is the communication gap, uh, which uh, 
which is a problem that arises from the club side because uh, they face difficulty in uh, providing the timely uh, announcement of the events that are actually happening. And also uh, one, uh, one, one major time-consuming uh, time thing is the membership processing, which becomes uh, uh, very tedious in case of registration as well as the processing. And another one is the limited flexibility in the club selection, meaning that a uh, uh, few people actually become hesitant in order to join the club because they don't actually know uh, what the process or what are the activities which is happening inside a club. So we put all these uh, pain points at one point and then we thought that we have to uh, give a very clear or the defined problem statement in order to arrive at the proper solution. So we just uh, had a question in our mind, uh, like what is that we are supposed to do? And we arrived at the solution telling that, yes, we have to create a centralized platform where all the members, irrespective of the geographical constraints, can get connected with, the, with that and use all the benefits. And at the same time, all the events which are happening in the club has to be notified to them without any delay or without any constraints. So uh, when all these came into our mind, we just moved into the ideation stage where uh, you could, you could uh, see the picture of the students uh, involving deeply into it, uh, where the students uh, took or uh, posted too much of uh, ideas. They did so much of brainstorming sessions. They had uh, so much of uh, explorations on what to do next. And then we found that we have to identify and we have to solve all the pain points which are actually uh, put in front of us uh, by the target audience as well as the other other uh, uh, club organizers. Uh, so what we did was we just moved into the prototyping stage. Mohan um, Narayan, sir, to the next slide. Uh, so this is one such uh, prototype which you could see. Uh, we have named it as uh, All Club. Uh, this is actually a one-stop solution in order to eradicate or in order to address all the pain points, which is actually which was actually shown in the previous slide. Uh, so this is capable of uh, uh, bridging the communication gap and giving the information about the activities and the events which are happening. And it also provides a clear uh, explanation of what each and every club is doing and how easier people could get into. So this, uh, we thought that uh, a solution like this could actually bring about all the members or the individuals who are actually interested to get into the club activities into a one single platform. Uh, as, uh, sorry, as uh, Mr. Uh, Jagdish already, already said that, uh, uh, sir, to the next slide. On, sir, to the next slide, please. Uh, we end up uh, definitely with a BMC, uh, which is a major one because this helps us in identifying whether uh, the problem statement which we have chosen is again a sustainable one and it is also capable of uh, solving all the pain points of the customers. So you can clearly see that the value proposition which is uh, provided here is something which which gives a very, uh, a very pretty good idea or a pretty good platform to all the members who actually gets connected into it. It is actually a centralized management management team uh, who are capable of uh, connecting all the people and all the members, even if it is a cross club, it is fine. That is also possible through our app. And there are real time notification which are, without making people miss out that uh, uh, the events which they actually uh, look into. And uh, you can see that the customer relationship is very simple. It is self-service. They can directly get into it uh, without waiting for uh, any uh, verification or the registration process and the community engagement. It is, again, a very simple thing. And again, coming to the revenue streams, we have uh, we have a subscription model and advertisement revenue, which is ready to work down with. And the cost structure here is the development and the maintenance cost of the infrastructure. And definitely we need to have a marketing and the promotion cost and the partnership cost. So apart from that, we have the key partners here, key activities and the key resources. It is, I think it is uh, pretty much clear from our BMC that uh, all the club members and the organizers are definitely going to be our uh, key partners. Apart from that, the technology providers, yes, we have to maintain a very neat and a very clear uh, service on the technology in order to develop with the uh, prototype. Activities we are into the development of the app into the next level, like we are taking it to the web services and then to the marketing as well as the promotions and uh, key resources, definitely the technology infrastructure and the partners to with, with whom we are associated with. 
and coming to our channels, we have mobile applications, website, as well as the partners who are already into the clubs and the customer segments. Yes, uh, definitely the club organizers and the people, the individuals who are really interested to get into it. So with this, uh, I end up my presentation and I'm handing over it to Mr. Uh, Tarek. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sajita. So uh, this is one of the problem uh, where everyone faces in, in their real life. Uh, it may be a profession or any personal life, the overwhelming proliferation of applications that we use on a daily basis. Uh, from communication tools like WhatsApp and email uh, to calendar and task management apps and the multitude of social media platforms, what we find ourselves juggling an array of applications to meet our diverse needs. This scenario is not just about the myriad of apps, it's about the fragmentation of our digital lives, the complexity and the inefficiency of navigation through various platforms often leaves us grappling with the communication overload, scattered information, and the challenge of maintaining productivity amidst of constant app switching. Keeping these points in mind, uh, we did empathy across the institutions and also with our digital marketing companies for identifying a better solution. Uh, we found that a single platform which connects everything, social medias and even calendars, will be the solution to address these pain points. So our goal is to envision a future where the digital landscape is streamlined, new, and tailored to enhance our productivity and overall user experience. Keeping this, uh, we did our empathy part and we identified the users' uh, uh, empathy as communication overload uh, when compared. We have WhatsApp, Facebook, Insta, so and so and fragmented of information from here and there and time consuming task management system and the CMR contact, which especially points out the digital marketing team where when they are promoting, they have should have a contact separately for WhatsApp, separately for uh, uh, Facebook and so and so. And security and privacy concerns is a very uh, highly important. And notifications, every uh, WhatsApp or email or uh, uh, calendars will be giving a notification, which uh, another uh, problem for us to uh, take care of everything. And limited cross-platform integration and uh, cross-device uh, comp compatibility. So uh, one uh, one uh, platform will support and another will not support. So considering these things, we, we plan to create a uh, solution that is all-in-one at the aggregator app. Mohan, sir. So this is called as AIO, all-in-one aggregator app, where uh, the uh, individuals or even uh, the digital marketing team uh, can get sign in and they can have uh, all the uh, uh, their Gmail account or uh, their Facebook uh, um, social media platforms, uh, in Insta, Twitter, uh, uh, in one uh, under one platform where if they are like to uh, share a screen or a message, they will have an option and uh, which will automatically uh, uh, share their particular information to the respective um, um, apps. So this all-in-one aggregator app will, will take care of all the uh, security as well as the all the uh, social media connects and the contacts and the even calendars. So that it will it will uh, take care of the notifications and once if we have gone uh, gone into it uh, we we can easily able to uh, control our notifications as well as the our social media handles. So in in order to expand this as in a product, we come up with a BMC model. Uh, Morgan, sir. So uh, we, we consider the value proposition as the main thing. Uh, we call uh, uh, value proposition as the heart of a uh, product. Uh, that, is a BM, that is why it is in the center part. Uh, value propo proposition is unified platform uh, for uh, uh, which, which uh, simplifies the access and integrating with existing applications and enhance user experience to improve efficiency and reduce the cognitive loads. So keeping this value as a uh, value proportion as a uh, in uh, in mind, uh, what are the key activities we did? We 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 partnered with app developers and device manufacturers and the business solution providers uh, to uh, to uh, to enhance the key activities as platform development, marketing and advertisement, and collaboration with third party app developers 
with the resources of software development team and the user experience and, and marketing and sales team. And uh, the customer segment we have identified as individuals managing both personal and professional tasks and business seekings and unified communication and task management solutions. Uh, how we maintain a customer relationship through continuous user feedback and regular updates and improvements and community engagement through the channels, either it may be of direct sales through an online platform or partnership with device manufacturers or collaboration with the business solution providers. So the, we have two more things that is task structure and the revenue, the development tasks and marketing advertisement and maintenance comes under task structure, whereas the revenue premium model with basic features and one-time purchase and business licensing for entire enterprise solution will comes under the revenue scheme. So these are the uh, three more uh, three pro, um, mo models which we have taken and we have uh, uh, showcased here. Okay. So thank you, thank you, team. Now it's uh, queries. We have completed our presentations. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you all very much. Thanks, thanks a lot to Mohan and Yagadish and uh, Ms. Saida and Taran. That was uh, really fast forward going through a large institution with a lot of interesting, very interesting insights. And uh, since I have, a, I'm, I try to get my internet installed, but uh, there is actually severe problems with the construction area here, as I found out. Um, so I'm still on my iPad. Uh, but it works, but I have a hard time to see um, if there are questions, Q and A's in the chat. So, but first, um, big thank you, big applause to, to all of you. And I'm uh, so excited to learn um, and to actually hopefully get to visit you uh, in, the, in the summer, the summer time and to see there with my own eyes what, what you're doing. I have a lot of questions um, written down here, but I don't want to be the first one. If there is a question um, or a remark from our um, from our guests here, please raise your hand or just start talking and switch on your video so we we have a chance to see all of you. Lynn, do you want to try? Hi, yeah, sure. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, hi. Um, hi. That was an incredible presentation. Um, and I wanted to ask you, given that you start, you've embedded design thinking as a as a culture across such a big institution, what would be your biggest tip for someone looking to do that within their own organization? Because that's something that we're helping other organizations do, and to get other people to to feed into that would be brilliant. So, what would be your biggest tip? for embedding design thinking as culture within an organization? Unfortunately, we can't hear you, Mohan, somehow. Um, I think he's muted. Oh, it's not muted. No, he's not muted. I mean, uh, even. Maybe you can take the question, uh, Jagadish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, until uh, Morgan said, let's just get ready. And let me take the uh, comment uh, question. How do you onboard and train on the scale the 150 people who are part of your team? Thanks for the great presentation. And thank you, Hoda. And uh, let me take you back. Yes, uh, it is a good thing, like, you know, hiring 150 people in a team as a DT core team. So this core team works in a zero to 360 degree. You know, it starts from uh, hiring the people and to the implementations in the classroom. You know, uh, this core team is actually divided into five different arenas. Uh, one is on the teaching and learning process. And the second one is uh, skill and career development. And third, incentive for creativity. And fourth, so industry institute partnership self. And uh, the fifth one is social responsibility initiative. So through HR practices, uh, we initially hire the member and uh, we change, not change exactly, uh, shaping a mindset of the uh, community uh, to adopt 
as we as do a lot of induction lot of induction and uh, the training to the members and we make them to showcase their own work and we have a lot of articles instead and we will include uh, things and also there is a central body who could review this 150 members you know their works and the thought process and aligning them because you know uh, dealing 150 members in a team the aligning of the team is very very important so that's uh, made us to work possibility. Every day we are learning and uh, we are trying to incorporating the design thinking and the design thinking is awesome actually. It's for life. So that's one thing which actually we got it from uh, this. All right, Morgan sir, uh, you could... Juan, are you, are you ready to answer the first yes, question? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks, Yagadesh. <laughs> If I have understood the question rightly, she asked what would be the one big uh, tip that we could possibly share. Is that right? That's it. That's it. Sorry? Yes. Yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. See, basically, be prepared for the long haul. It's not easy work. Uh, it calls for a lot of commitment, patience, perseverance. That's one thing that we've learned in our experience in taking this forward. And uh, uh, in terms of the commitment from the top management, the leadership, that's very, very crucial. Without the leader's vision and the support, this wouldn't have been possible. Dr. Nalin is a hands-on um, manager of uh, the whole process. And he kind of, uh, uh, he's got a, such a large vision. It's, it, we're finding it difficult to measure up to his expectations. But in, the, in terms to put, to cut the long story short, it's not easy and uh, you have to make a beginning and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be long run. It's a long haul. Uh, there are no easy ways or shortcuts to, to share. With, uh, it's been a long haul for us. I wish I could share something uh, in a nutshell, but uh, it's been a long haul for us also. Thank you. Thanks. That was lovely. Hope I answered your question. You definitely did. You definitely did. Thanks. Is there any other queries? I, if I could, could, you, could you please help with the, with the questions on the chat? Because I have a hard time to see them. I will. And I see Joanne has raised her hand as well. Right. Yes, thank you. And thank you for the excellent presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, at the very beginning, you mentioned about adopting a school. And can you just explain that? And I, I don't know if I quite understand, each student adopts a school or what does that entail like in practice, adopting a school? What does that exactly mean? Well, what we do is we write to the school authorities, ask for a time, go meet them and explain how design thinking can change their lives in terms of delivering in the classroom, in terms of handling the problems that they faced in a day-to-day -day life, and how they could uh, develop the students in a, in a far more effective way by delivering effectively and an engaging way in the classroom. And uh, uh, surprisingly, once they learn about the benefits of design thinking, the people have been very, very receptive. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've not, uh, surprisingly, we've not had any difficulty so far, touch wood. Uh, we're glad to share that. When we explain, when we sell the concept to them, they easily accept that. And in fact, uh, out of the 600, 650 uh, teachers that we have, each one has adopted a school. And we do the evangelizing part in these schools by going to the schools, conducting boot camps for the students and educating the teachers on how useful it is, sharing our best practices with them, that's how we've been doing. Yeah, thank you. Then I'll drop in one of the chat questions. This one comes from Natalie, and she would like to know um, more about the principle or practice of humor um, that you mentioned. Can you share a bit more about sort of how is there an intentional way you acknowledge or invite people, your students to use humor in their work or? Humor, I guess you would agree with me, cannot be structured and offered as a guideline. Uh, uh, 
it is handled naturally by the faculty. One culture that we have is we always encourage our students to ask questions and try to answer the questions in the most amiable way. And uh, there are many teachers who consciously practice humor in the classroom. And that's how it is. I mean, I, mean, I don't have a, a, a formula to share, but it is left to the individuals. And uh, I could also add certain points as for the center for learning and teaching. Uh, it's it's very beautiful when we implement uh, design thinking into our teaching learning practices. You know, uh, once the students comes to know what is the end outcome or the the change of mindset that do in the classroom. Uh, one example which could I say a gamification in education. It is not something limited to just a leaderboard or a grades or a point. It is entirely the mindset of process. Uh, for example, if we take five to ten teams in a classroom who's over uh, started to learning or solving a challenge that we put. So we award grades to them. Okay. So there, the deeper instruction actually we give to them in terms of gamification. The team first complete and running forward to the dais will get 100 points. We don't mind even say if it is a correct or wrong. For the just a moment of gamification that we set as a rules, so our students started to run literally to the dais. So that is where uh, one example I could say how the DD uh, is actually we are practicing in humor. And also at the time of uh, DD uh, boot camp that we conduct for our own institutions. Like, you know, uh, they started to work, they started to ideate, they started to do an empathy, use their empathy, they start meeting different, different people. They're so happy on ideating. You know, uh, it's entirely into the teamwork. Like the student had a lot of uh, humor sense on the work. And we could see our students are happy when they started to do it. They fight with each other, they smile with each other. So that taking the part of TD into an awesome one and the humorous one. It is not only limited to the teaching learning. Um, we are talking about the entire framework. It's an objective. The problems that we took, like, you know, happy learning has to be happy. So that's one thing. Even sometimes the project, uh, when they work, they may will not come out as expected, but still we motivate our end of student to do that, have a humor sense in the TDs. So that's always required, you know, when the happy learning in the classrooms, you know, the best part of the life that no one will forget. Yes. But that, uh, thanks thanks for answering that question. Actually, that it is actually great to hear that. But I have to ask you, uh, if I look at the German, uh, the German school system, for example, at the elementary and secondary school, there there is a lot of regulation through the government. And uh, I think, Humor is not a part of those uh, curricula, and and so uh, how how are, are you? How is your whole institute? Is that aligned with the official governmental guidelines in India or at at your and and, and how? If I may how can you, you do that? We lost you for a while. Oh, yes. So well, shall I, I'm I'm there again or. I was my question was um, my question was uh, what, what you're what you were talking about and the whole institution is that somehow aligned with the official governmental guidelines for education um, or is that are, are you walking a special path or are there no official governmental guidelines well, in India? In question. Germany there are. <laughs> okay. Uh uh, we are not too far behind. We do have restrictions. There are no guidelines given by the government as such. The new education policy that has been announced... I, I thought you were uh, ahead because being ahead means there is no regulations. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually speaking, there are no guidelines. There are no constraints in terms of doing that. In fact, whatever, like I said, it's a long haul that we've been doing. We've been, it's, it has been a work in progress and I'm sure it will be, it will continue to be a work in progress. What has happened is now we've found a way to do all these activities to complement the classroom delivery that happens. The classroom delivery is what is mandated by the accrediting agencies and the universities. So we, what we have done, we've charted our own path. Uh, it's a very unique path. And uh, within, without violating any of the aggregating rules, 
or guidelines, we managed to do this. That's why I said, uh, at the risk of sounding a little cliche, I would repeat, it has been a long haul. It has been a long uh, time experimenting, exploring, and uh, succeeding. And I have I answered that question? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> there are and some I other questions in the question. chat. May I take that? Did you find yeah. that schools you adopted and their teachers were able to redesign lesson plans and projects by integrating DT easily? No, that hasn't happened because it's been a, a short while. And as I said earlier, there are too many constraints imposed by the, uh, uh, the regulating bodies. If it is a school, it is a school uh, board of uh, primary education, board of uh, secondary education, board of uh, senior secondary education. They do not give the kind of freedom for the schools to experiment. It has been whatever we have done, it's purely because of the vision that uh, Dr. Nalan Vimal has had. And he's been willing to put in the time, the effort, the money, uh, and he's been very persistent. So it's been a very persistent effort. That's what has brought us here. And in terms of the others, uh, the evangelizing part that we are doing now is helping them to understand the possibilities. Uh, I don't think anyone has made an effort to uh, kind of redesign their lesson plans and the projects uh, by integrating DTEs. They've not explored that part of it. I mean, they are still in the process of learning about the possibilities that design thinking offers. Right. Uh, I would like to add uh, into the terms of uh, lesson plans and the DT projects. You know, uh, usually every country have uh, the guideline body for the improvement of the education. And yes, do India also have a, a governing body, but they are also actually transforming into an awesome way right now. Uh, initially, when we worked with the design thinking frame uh, framework uh, through an educate for an education, uh, we developed a curriculum framework which is in line with the uh, guidelines of the uh, body government bodies. And since uh, the institution is an autonomous, and we do have uh, provisions to align our pedagogical method. You know, uh, the universities actually tell them uh, the duration of the course and how it to be carried out. But the pedagogy is actually standing uh, with the teacher's side. So when we do the design thinking based teaching also, and the projects in terms of project, uh, we do have a special course in our curriculum at the design thinking and innovation. We have provision for a project, mini project. Uh, we also send, uh, provide a provision for the internship with the industry. And also student can take a capstone at final uh, in the industry project where everything, the mindset, you know, uh, for instance, uh, the SNS institution uh, have a provision for the student to take design thinking course in the first semester of study. So whomever comes to the SNS institution, ir, uh, I mean, irrespective of the departments, they must go through the course and get the four credits. So this is actually making our student mindset to have the design thinking and entirely into the next four years of program in terms of higher education and uh, in terms of arts and science also. Thanks, thanks a lot. Actually, we are a little bit over time now, uh, over the official time, but I still see people in the call, a lot of people in the call from all around the world. And um, if uh, I think we should officially now end the recording. And if our friends from India, from SNS, if you have a little bit more time I would, uh, I think there are several other questions um, for sure, but then I would like to officially now thank you very much for giving us an instruction, giving us ideas and insights uh, of your great work at SNS um, institutions. And it's it's really amazing. And I'm, uh, I would like to, to know a lot more and I'm so happy uh, to hopefully get the chance to visit you and uh, see kids in the kindergarten and in the schools and at the university level, at the PhD level, being uh, in the design thinking mood um, is, is so great. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Big applause to our friends from SNS, to our GDTA members.
And um, I would like to point out that we have our next GDTA spotlight session in March uh, performed from Australia. Hopefully we have a, we have a time change so that it's um, suitable for our friends from Australia, Jochen Schweitzer and uh, Siehem and Sebastian. They will talk about their latest book, Transform with Design. And there is uh, the core is design thinking. And uh, Jochen Schweitzer is also a long-term member of the GDTA. So please join us on our next meeting. The date is March 19th. Uh, the time is not confirmed yet because we are struggling a little bit with the time zones. So, but uh, we'll let you know. So thanks, thanks a lot. And um, do you have still a little bit of time to stay, Hi. our friends? Ah, ah, I forgot. So little hint about our conference in September, okay. the GDTA conference. And I hope it doesn't collide with the design thinking festival in at SNS, uh, because our times here is our fixed now 13th and 14th of September um, at Potsdam, at the HPI, at the D school there, uh, we'll celebrate the the GDTA conference and the topic will probably be or most likely be design thinking and artificial intelligence and uh, what it does together. So um, please take a note and then we officially uh, stop the recording. Mm -hmm.